These are the steps that I'm making during the design of a small boat. If you want to learn them, stay tuned. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to my debut video. Today, we are starting a journey of discovering the world of boat design. As we move forward, I'll be releasing a series of videos that will guide you through the step-by-step -step process of designing your own boat. I know you must be wondering who is this person and why he's doing all this and why he's making these videos. But don't worry, I've got you covered. In another video, I share my story and background in bow design. So without further ado, let's get started and explore the process of bow design and let's find the answer to the question of what step needs to be taken to move from an idea to the design of the boat. Understanding the boat design process starts with understanding the whole boat building process. From that initial spark of inspiration, whether it is in your head or head of your loved one, everything in your life and boat is not exception to that, starts with an idea. Then we need to take the idea and bring it to the life through the several steps of design process. Through that design process, we need to make sure that every detail is precisely as envisioned. Next step is to bring boat to life through the production and commissioning before we put it to test to ensure that it meets all the expectations. And in this video, we'll be focusing specifically on the critical steps of boat design process. So let's zoom in and uncover secrets to turning the idea into nautical creation. As said before, every boat design starts with an idea. We bring idea to life through concept design. And in this stage, we are going to translate the idea onto the piece of paper or digital space. This is actually the first time in the whole life of the boat that we can see. Once the concept design is ready and we are satisfied with it, we will continue to refine the design and put more details into it. Next milestone is going to be approval of the design. And if somebody is asking why is that in some parts of the world, in order to register the boat, the design upon the boat was built needs to be approved. So after the approval of the design by a relevant legislation party, we will continue to refine it and put more details into it. And this is actually the last stage of the whole design process. Product of that last stage will be drawings and documentation that are essential to manufacture the boat. In this channel, we will focus in on concept design and I will provide you information, tips and data so you can succeed in designing your own boat. In complete design process, the designer plays a very critical part and role in bringing the idea into the design. So now let's zoom in into the role of the designer in this whole story. In the next video, we will talk about what the idea is and how we will capture it on a piece of paper. However, this idea is shaped by various constraints. Constraints can be operational, for instance, and those are, I want to sail in a shallow water area. I want to go in below the low bridges. I want to go to certain size of the lock. Those are operational constraints that design needs to fulfill, but there are other types of constraints, such as legal, which are rules and regulations. The role of the designer is to find technical solutions and combine them in one big technical solution that is going to fulfill in the same time the idea and the constraints. In order to do this, the designer needs to have a deep understanding of materials, construction methods, engineering principles evolved, technical solutions, excellent communication abilities, an understanding of cultural nuances, and much more. On this channel, we will focus on helping you master solely technical aspect of the bow design, but it is important to also develop your communication and artistic skills to truly excel in this field. Now, let's examine the key elements that are needed to design a boat. Whatever we do in a life, and boat design is not exemption to that, having the proper tools and knowledge is necessary for success. Tools we can divide in two categories. The first category of tools is specific to naval architecture subject and will help us in creating the hull form and analyze the boat's behavior, such as stability, sea keeping behavior, resistance of the boat. Some of the tools even offer strength calculations based on some standard or class rules. Some of those tools are plugins for general application softwares like Linoceros or SolidWorks, while some of the tools are standalone versions. The second category of the tools are those that are used in a wide range of applications and are essential for generating 3D models, documentation for approval or production. CAD software such as SOLIDWORKS and Rhino, as well as tools like Excel and Word, fall into this category. While tools are crucial for increased efficiency and speeding up design process, it is also possible to design a boat using just a pen and paper and calculator like it was done in the days before the age of technology. Please let me know in the comments below 
what tools you are using so I can try to adapt at least some of the videos to your preferred tools. Regardless of tools used, having the knowledge is what truly counts. Access to knowledge has never been more abundant than it is today. We have traditional schooling systems, universities, colleges, we have online courses, videos on platforms like YouTube and hands-on experience through internships or even working in design studios. The opportunities for learning today are limitless. When it comes to designing boats, having some understanding of the production process can also increase your design skills. There is one knowledge area that I haven't mentioned. Those are books. Vast ocean of knowledge. They remain an invaluable source of knowledge in this field. From technical manuals, textbooks, personal narratives, historical accounts. Whether you're just starting out or looking to increase your knowledge, books can provide a wealth of information and insights and inspirations that can help you to achieve your goals. And our case is no different. Some of the recommended books include Principle of Your Design. For me, that's a foundation one. So start with that, whatever you want to do, whether you want to do sailing boats or power boats or semi-displacement boat, start with Principles of Your Design. In addition, if you want to strive more towards the sailboats, Keep reading the Sailing Yacht Design Theory and Practice and IRA Hydrodynamics and Performance of the Sailing Yachts. If you're more into the power boats and semi-displacement area, then start reading Sorenson's Guide to Power Boats. Whether you go to sailing boats or power boats, in the end, every boat will have a systems, mechanical and electrical ones. Books that are related to that topic are mechanical system handbook and boats on our electrical handbook. Access to these resources can greatly aid in the design process and provide a deeper understanding of the subject itself. In the description below you can find affiliate links for the books. If you want to check more recommended books, go on my website. There is a chapter with the books. There are several that I picked up as a, something that should be read. In many of the books there is something called design spiral. Design spiral is a commonly used term for the process that we will follow in order to design a boat. If you just open Google and search for boat design spiral or ship design spiral, there will be plenty of results. If you zoom in and take a closer look on each one of them, you will see that they are very, very similar, but not the same. The question that it comes by itself is which one to use? Well, there is no universal design spiral. As far as I learned in my life, I always tweak and need to adopt to the project because there is no right and wrong. Like many things in a life, design spiral is not a different. It's what is good and optimal in particular moment and particular project for a particular boat. Because design spiral depends on a ship type mostly but also on different aspects of project and we will see that in the future how we progress through the projects and design spiral every project on this channel we will start with the design spiral just to to make it clear and that we see how design spiral develop how we are developing the boats i notice people are confused with the design spiral but from my point of view it's just a natural way of working let's unroll design spiral and see how that is very common for every one of us how we pursue a goal well first we set the goal and we set our aim towards that goal, and then we make a plan and take the action towards that goal. And especially if this new thing in our life, knowledge or everything that we do first time, is going to be a very steep learning curve with high steps and uncomfortable feeling. And most probably we are not going to be satisfied with our outcome. That can be due to various reasons. It can be due to the fact that we didn't know what we didn't know, so our goal setting was not okay, our aim was not okay, or even that we made some mistakes during the execution phase, but that all doesn't matter because if we reflect properly and learn from our mistakes, then next goal that we set is going to be better set it and it's going aim is going to be better and the steps that we are going to make are not going to be that steep and not going to be that high so we will be more efficient and we will achieve it in less time and less effort somebody will be satisfied with this outcome somebody not but going next stage to set up a new goal and and, and new aim and make it even better it's going to be way more easier than previous two times because of all that compounded knowledge. So design spiral is just like that. First iteration is going to be difficult because it's completely unknown thing. But then next iteration is going to be easier because we already have knowledge and data collected in the first iteration. And then all the way to the, to, to the center of the design where we will be in the end with the boat design that we are satisfied with. So that's a design spiral. It's a natural way of working. That's how we all work and live in life. If we unroll design spiral, we can also see that that can coincide with design stage of our process, right? First is going to be a concept, few iterations, and then a proof, again, few iterations. And then in the end, vary to the details for production, 
last few iterations. So that's design spiral. It's however you look at it from each perspective, it's representation of natural way of working. Let's now dive into the design spiral, finally, into design spiral for this particular boat. First step of our design spiral is to define a boat. Then we will find example boats that we will use in a way that we will find the specification and data about those boats, store them in some small database and extract later on when we need to determine the main dimensions of our boat and to create small sketch of our boat and predict the weight of our boat. When that's being done, we can design our hull, then predict the resistance of the boat, which will help us to determine the power requirements. After that, we will sketch the layout of the boat and we will work on a laser system. When that's done, structural design take in place and safety systems will follow. When we set up the safety systems, we can focus on electrical system and when that's done, we can do weight calculation. Weight calculation is different from weight prediction. Weight prediction is based on the statistical database. Weight calculation is the calculation of the mass of our boat, of our design. So when that's done, we will be busy with checking the behavior in statical conditions about stability of our boat. And if we succeed to fulfill the requirements from certain standard, then we can continue creating specification and general arrangement plan. When that's done, we can focus on the price calculation of the equipment and materials that we need to install and to build our boat. When that's done, basically we are on the crossroad. We need to check if we were successful. So if, if our specification is very close to, to our boat definition, that means that we were pretty good. In the same time, if our GA plan is close to our sketch, that was also a good sign. And if our weight calculation is quite similar to, to the weight prediction, that means that we are really on a good track. Now from here we have two paths. One path is to go to approved design, if we were precise enough. If not, then we need to continue at least one more iteration in exactly the same steps, but we will start from hull design. Input for hull design will be weight calculation, then we go again the steps from hull design. This is the design spiral for boat that we will design, that you have seen one of the first slides. Next several episodes will be taking step by step through the design spiral so we will do actually all these steps by the end of the series we will have a design ready let's recap what we covered today initially we covered general boat building process then we focus specifically on the design aspect including the role of the designer necessary tools and the importance of the utilizing books as a source of knowledge finally we discussed the design spiral as a whole and its application to the design of our small boat that concludes this episode don't hesitate to share your thoughts or ask a question if you enjoyed the video hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down, but please share your thoughts in the comments so I can improve future content. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.